Hey YouTube people, let's talk about Surface Book 3 rumors. Now normally I don't do videos like this, I don't usually speculate on things, um, but I have not seen a Surface device have so many leaks and yet we still know nothing about the device. Um, there's been so many different technologies that have been thrown out as possible contenders to be on the Surface Book 3. Uh, take for example, uh, initially we saw some ice lake benchmarks that, that were being thrown around and then later on it's like no it's going to be Comet Lake and in between them we had hey there's even a Tiger Lake possibility going on, on out here and then we even had some people mentioning well it, it's possible that we could get the the Ryzen 4000 series which would be a departure while they did do it in the Surface Laptop 3 um, it's not it's not an impossibility uh, but no real good data on actually getting Ryzen 4000 in the Surface Book 3. But let's talk about the different technologies that people are talking about and why uh, people are so, not necessarily upset, but they're, they're very particular about what they might want in the CPU technology that may be used in the Surface Book 3. First of all, let's talk about Ice Lake. Now, Ice Lake, to me, is, is the best contender um, although I don't think it's the most likely contender. The reason why I think it's probably the best is um, you do have a 25 watt version of Ice Lake. Uh, it's built on the 10 nanometer process. It's great, it's power efficient. It has Iris Plus with 64 execution units. And that means that even when the top of your clipboard is pulled off of the Surface Book, you still have pretty good graphical performance in that top section. Um, but one of the downsides is it does cap out at a quad core, four cores, eight threads. So that is a downside of it, um, which is why uh, we're seeing in the most le recent leaks that Comet, Comet Lake uh, technologies uh, are the ones that are, are looking most likely. Now, People are down on Comet Lake because it's a 14 nanometer process. It's an older process, a process we've seen uh, for a long time, even though it's you know been tweaked a little uh, for 2020. Um, it still is not 10 nanometer like Ice Lake. And that means that it's not nearly as power efficient. It also has worse graphics than Ice Lake. It has, uh, I think it caps out at, it might even be 24 execution units, it's probably 32, 24 or 32 execu execution units on the graphics versus the 64 that you see in Ice Lake. Not to mention a 14 nanometer process is gonna use more power to do the same amount of work. So that's why people are down on Comet Lake, but they do have higher powered processors in, Comet, in the Comet Lake technologies you actually have a little bit higher clock speeds that are available. And that actually pairs really well with graphic cards uh, that you have in the Surface Book 3 in the base. So it's not, it's not out of left field for them to go a regression back into the 14 nanometer because you actually can get close to five gigahertz clock speeds. And another benefit that I don't think people are necessarily talking about because I don't know if it's true or not. I mean, it's, wild speculation, but with Comet Lake, you have the possibility to roll uh, a hexacore uh, or even an eight core processor. I don't think that's gonna happen in the Surface Book 3 because it's I mean, you've got that really thin uh, clipboard section. So anyways, uh, there are some benefits to Comet Lake and I can see why Intel and Microsoft may choose to pair the Surface Book 3 with that device. So Tiger Lake, uh, I don't think that's going to happen at all. That's not even expected out until the second half of 2020. So a spring release with the Surface Book 3 just doesn't line up very well. Although it, you know, it, it's not unprecedented for hardware vendors to throw out a new chip with the Surface Book 3. In fact, the, the Surface Pro 7 was one of the very first devices with Ice Lake. So it wouldn't be unprecedented, but I don't feel like that's very likely at all. So let's talk about the GPU now. And um, if you follow my channel, I've kind of had this like wild swinging of Surface devices. I can't make up my mind. I, I will say my, con my conclusion is the 13.5 inch Surface Book is the best form factor that I would want 
um, as my full-time, uh, on-the-go, usable device for pretty much everything. Um, obviously, I'm using a Surface Pro 7 right now, but um, that's, that's, that's another story. Um, but the 15-inch was just so good in terms of graphical performance. It had a 1060 with 6 gigabytes of VRAM which was, is great for, us, uh, for a mobile device. It was, it was super powerful, um, especially in the, the form factor. Uh, it, it still today, even though it launched, I think about three years ago, the Surface Book 2 15 inch is the best two in one with the most power uh, pound for pound of anything else out there. I think, I think finally there's some things coming out uh, like the, the Asus Ze uh, Zephyrus G14 that, that obviously, you know, is a very lightweight package that would cream the Surface Book 2, absolutely. So um, I won't go there, but it's not a two-in-one either, so there's that. Uh, so anyways, back to back to the, the Surface Book 3, uh, or like, talking about the 2 right now. So I really like the 13 and a half inch form factor, but graphically that 1050, uh, GTX 1050, with only 2 gigabytes of VRAM was not quite powerful enough, so I... So I'd have the 13 and a half inch device and it was like, yeah, this runs things pretty well, but man, that 1060 is just so good. So I'd, I'd sw go back to the 15 inch and then back to the 13 and a half inch. Anyways, um, let's talk about GPU potentials in the Surface Book 3. Let's start with the 15 inch. So um, one of the ways that if, if you watch my channels, you know, one of the main things I look at is how much thermal power uh, the chips can dissipate because uh, the more power that or watts that the processors are are using means the more calculations are happening. Um, now there is uh, efficiency that you have to measure as well, but if you're if taking two chips and one's running at 25 watts, another one's running at 11 watts, you know the one with 25 watts is giving it a lot more performance. So. Uh, and the reason I'm talking about this is when we look, there has been one link leak of the Surface Book 3 that is the biggest indicator to me that we're going to have a pretty decent jump in performance. And that's the fact that the AC adapter went from 102 watts to now us seeing a 127 watt AC adapter, which is about a 20% jump uh, in thermal or, uh, power capacity. So what that means is, while you know, I was thinking, well, the 1060 pretty much used all that, all of those 102 watts that it could pull from the brick. In fact, there was a scandal because it could exceed the 102 watts, and the battery would actually drain while you were playing a game. And so Microsoft had to kind of dial things back even to keep it um, at that 102 watts of power. So now that we're seeing 127 watt power brick. Uh, that means you have more overhead to push the chips inside the laptop. So bar none, we're going to see at least a 20% performance jump from the Surface Book 2 to the Surface Book 3. Now, if you pair that with efficiencies of uh, a newer process node for the processor itself, and also moving from the 1060 generation to uh, the newer GTX generation, uh, that actually gives you process improvements that mean with the same amount of power, you can do a lot more work. So, and if we're, we're talking basically 15% improvement uh, from the NVIDIA graphics of the 1060 generation to the 1660 Ti, which we'll most likely be seeing in the Surface Book 3, uh, you could see that combined with the thermal power envelope being increased 20%. You might see a 30 to 50 percent jump in performance for that 15 inch version which is a great uh, which is a you know that's source books 2 15 inch is already pretty powerful so that's that's going to be worth upgrading to a lot of people now let's talk about the 13 and a half inch because that's what i'm actually most excited about because that week 1050 with two gigabytes of ram could turn into either a 1650 minimum it's going to be a 1650 which if you just look at the performance of 1050 versus 1650, uh, the 1650 is you know within 15% of a 1060. So with the 13 and a half inch, you're getting basically uh, 
you'll be getting in the 13 half inch Surface Book 3 almost the same performance as the Surface Book 2 15 inch, uh, which means that's a massive jump in performance, almost double. So uh, let's talk one more nuance on that GTX 1650. Now, it, I don't know if this is coincidence or not, but NVIDIA just barely refreshed their lineup of mobile processors, and they have introduced a 1650 Ti, which really, uh, it, it basically bumps the memory to uh, GDDR6. Uh, it actually uh, nerfs some of the clock speeds just a little bit from, from the 1650 with that faster RAM. So, um, but what basically what that means is, is more performance. And that's probably pretty on par with the, the last generation of the 1060. Close. So that's what I will be super excited for, to have a 13 half inch Surface Book 3 with the performance of the, the highest end Surface Book 2 of the previous. Because that 13 inch, I mean, it's hard to get a lot of power in a 13 inch form factor. Razer, I believe, just launched uh, a new 1650 Ti in a 13 inch, and that's one of the only ones I've ever seen to actually have that. The Surface uh, Book 3 probably is gonna follow suit and have that type of performance in that 13 inch form factor. So super excited about that. Um, lots of things to be excited about. Um, there's also the potential that there is a uh, Quadro uh, workstation class GPU in the 15 inch. Um, uh, my viewers are probably not super excited about that. I mean, they're mostly concerned about gaming performance, but if, if you do CAD or need uh, a higher level validated graphic solution, uh, that's going to be an awesome uh, option for you. But uh, we'll have to see how that, that rolls out. That's obviously all of this pure speculation. Um, but anyways, that's uh, kind of a brief overview of all the different technologies we may see rolled up in the Surface Book 3. I am super excited to see it come out. Hopefully it happens in the next week or two, at least being announced. <laughs> We've seen all these leaks, um, and it's ranged from, and I think the, the initial price point, $1,699, all the way up to over $3,000 with 32 gigs of RAM which is a bump from the previous generation before we only had 16 gigabytes of RAM. And I believe that's LDDPR4, uh, the, the low power version RAM, which is great for battery life. Um, and there is also been leaked a two terabyte version of the Surface Book 3, supposedly, again. Uh, but those are really welcome additions because really what that does is, you know, They've got a certain price point for the highest end, and you know that means you move down to a one terabyte, which used to be the highest end, and you're not paying quite as much. So that's always a, a good thing to see. Um, anyways, I hope you've enjoyed this kind of overview of the potential for the Surface Book 3, and go ahead and mash that subscribe button and the like button as well, and we'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.